ಗಂಗನಾಧಿಪತೇ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸೋ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋಸ್ ನಾವು ಯುರ್ ಆಲ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾಟಗೋರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾರ್ಮ ರೈಟ್ well <laughs> i have a surprise for you <laughs> they're called the modifying factors and these are given in another chart which uh there's a link in the video description you can download it along with the first chart and let's take a look at these and how they affect the different types of karma first of all there's the motivation for any action the motivation is coming from the modes of nature the gunas there are three gunas goodness passion and ignorance or sattva rajas and tamas so karma acts through the modes of nature this body is conducted by the modes of nature we are not the doers uh we simply are along for the ride <laughs> and how we uh take what happens how we view our existence and our actions depends on totally how we, how we look at things our consciousness and we'll get into that too at the end and in later episodes but for right now try to understand we're not the doers everything that happens happens through the modes of nature god is doing everything and so whether an act is motivated by goodness passion or ignorance totally influences the karmic result krishna gives a very nice example in the 18th chapter of bhagavad gita about charity giving giving in the mode of ignorance means ah, i got to give this stuff you know <laughs> grudgingly with resistance and negative motion and uh giving at the wrong place and time to the wrong person or giving the wrong thing huh? and i gave the example of uh giving money to a homeless person who goes out and spends it on liquor or drugs. So darn mosquitoes. We have a choice as to how we do these actions. Huh? Giving in the mode of passion, for example, means I'm giving out of pride. I'm so wealthy and so religious and pious. and this poor person is so unfortunate and they're in such a terrible position let me give to them and help them huh this is like total ego right so this is giving in the mode of passion one hopes to get some result pious activities elevation to heavenly planets even good standing in the community or whatever uh, but this is in the mode of passion because it's done with desire giving in the mode of goodness however is done without desire either for uh external things such as pious activities heavenly planets or whatever or internal things such as being happy it's done strictly out of duty because the vedas say we should give now uh krishna makes a very explicit he says giving in the mode of goodness is done by the right person at the right time and place and to the right person so what does that mean well who is the right person first of all the right person to give charity is someone on the spiritual path someone in search of enlightenment someone who wants to offload their karmic burdens by giving charity but not just any old way huh at the right place and time well, what is the right place and time 
The right place is a sacred place, a temple, or a tirtha, a place of pilgrimage, such as Arunachala. And the right time is, well, there are three times during every day called sandhyas. The sandhya means a junction. So the junction between night and day, between morning and afternoon, and between day and night, in other words, sunrise, noon, and sunset, are the Sri Sandhyas. So auspicious activities in general should be performed at the three Sandhyas, such as chanting Gayatri Mantra or any mantra, doing pujas, and charity. So also a holy day, uh, like Janmashtami, or Ikadashi, or Purnima, or Ayanamsa. Uh, uh, these are holy days that are celebrated. Shivaratri, for example. Uh, uh, these are celebrated in India especially, but they're holy for everybody everywhere. Because on that day, people's consciousness is directed towards God, towards the Absolute. So the right person giving at the right time, in the right place, to the right person. And who is the right person? The liberated soul, the jnani. That's the best person to receive charity. Or a qualified brahmana. A qualified brahmana is not going to receive charity and keep it. A real brahmana would distribute everything he receives to others, knowing that more is coming huh, by his uh, accumulated good works, his own karma. So a real brahmana will always take whatever he gives and distribute it to others in charity himself. So the, the best way to give <laughs> is if you are on the path, you're doing sadhana, you have a guru, you're engaged in seva and puja and archana and dhyana. Huh? You should know what all these things are by now. And uh, you are trying to increase your good karma and get rid of your attachments. That's the motivation. That's the mode of goodness. Okay and you're giving in the right place, like a holy place, a temple or something, to the right person, like a realized sage or a brahmana, at the right time, which is sunrise, noon, or sunset. This is charity in the mode of goodness, and its result is exclusively good karma. Huh? Karma that leads upward to higher births, to higher lokas, to a better body, better senses, better mind. Uh, so this is what you want. For example, my, my good fortune in life comes from the fact that I was born when Jupiter was in Scorpio in the ninth house of religion, accompanied by Ketu, uh, conjunct Ketu. And I also have Mars exalted in the 10th house of work. So when astrologers, <laughs> when they see my chart, most of them say, wow, you're rich. You're like Bill Gates. You're super rich. Like Mars is exactly exalted. It's not just near, you know, within an orb of being exalted. It's right on, dead on. And I have to point out, However, I have Jupiter in the ninth with Ketu. And not to mention Saturn in the fifth retrograde with Pluto. Mm. So what that does is it takes away the material results of the exaltation of Mars and the Jupiter being in the house of religion. And it gives spiritual results. So yeah, I'm wealthier than Bill Gates. <laughs> And Jeff Bezos, or whatever his name is, and what's his face, huh? that idiot that runs Facebook. Yeah, I'm richer than all of them put together because I have no needs or wants or desires. 
I'm simply doing what I'm doing out of duty because I was trained by my guru. Jupiter is called guru in Sanskrit. In religion, which is the ninth house, so that I can approach liberation, which is K2 in the ninth house. So despite the, uh, the uh, problems given by Saturn and the delays and, and the uh, again and again being betrayed by people I trusted and so on, still I have managed to turn that into good karma by this alchemical process. You see, by doing the right thing at the right time with the right people and so on. So there are more factors that influence <laughs> the outcome. And those are called the constituents. Constituents of, of any action are the doer, the object, and the action. It's a triple. Huh? We've been over triples and triads many, many times in previous videos. I'm not going to go into that again. But for something to be real, it has to be a triple. It has to be a triad of uh, objective, subjective, and mediating or active, passive, and neutralizing. Uh, Gurdjieff talked about this too. So they all have to be there. And what karmic result you get depends on which one of those roles you're playing. Then there's the five factors of action given in Bhagavad Gita in the 10th or 12th chapter or something. The body, the intention, the senses, the effort, and destiny. <laughs> the hand of God. Uh, so all these things are necessary for action and all of them conduct different kinds of karma. And especially the destiny. Uh, if God wants it to happen, it's going to happen. If not, forget about it. <laughs> or it will happen in a different way than you intend. It happens all the time, doesn't it? And finally, there's our the five uh, darshanams, Pashu, Dvaita, Vishishta Dvaita, Vivarta, and Ajatta. And these five darshanams, depending on which state of consciousness you're in, have a tremendous influence on the karma. Huh? Uh, one of, for example, I was born in the Vishishta Dvaita mood. And then I was able to elevate myself after 30 years of sadhana to the uh, Vivartavada stage. So now I'm performing the Vivartavada sadhana. Uh, and it's like, karma? What karma? <laughs> but having Jupiter in the ninth is itself a yoga that reduces or eliminates all the bad reactions of previous karma. You have to be very fortunate to have Jupiter in the ninth house, and especially in a water sign like that. This is called Jupiter in a kendra. Kendra means a corner. So there are four corners in the chart. Jupiter in any one of those signs or houses will, will greatly reduce the impact of any kind of prarabdha karma that's coming to you. So when, when it looks like something really bad is going to happen, <laughs> what happens is it actually leads to a good result because it will prevent me from doing something stupid. <laughs> something that some little transient desire huh, that I may fall into uh, just uh, out of habit. So this is actually a great benediction. And I'm very lucky to have it, very thankful for it. Uh, so if you're in the higher darshanams, the impact of karma will be very much moderated. But if you're in the lower ones, especially the pashu, oh my God, the animalistic human beings, every little thing they have to suffer for. They don't get away with anything. No mercy, no grace. Why? They're not open to accepting it. So consciousness is the ultimate mediator of karma. And in the next episodes, we're going to talk in detail about how that works. Aung Tatsa, Aung Harihi Aung.